this is Andy Tube. In this video, I'm going to uh, work on the parts in what I'll call the bobbin area, uh, because most most people will recognize, you know, the bobbin area is this um, part of the sewing machine that holds the bobbin in the bobbin case and sits above the hook and has the feed dog and so forth. And uh, I had a good time exploring this area because there's some uh, features I hadn't come across before. And I had to use uh, a tool that I'd never used before on a vintage sewing machine once I figured it out. So that was fun. And uh, I'll name the parts like I do a lot of times. But what was interesting to me over the years was how the nomenclature for some of the parts change. Um, like I always think of this as the bobbin or bobbin case slide plate but uh, on this model Singer actually called this the hook slide and that's an abbreviation any of these parts were called the oscillating hook such and such like this is the oscillating hook slide in reference that the, the hook was not a rotary round and around and around but it has like a tick tock back and forth movement it oscillates back and forth uh, so I'm gonna leave that oscillating hook part off of most of the names of this but uh, I got I, I gathered together uh, the tools that I could remember using on this over the last couple days when I was playing with it and uh, I think you'll recognize um, most of them including I got a couple of blades from uh, my feeler gauge to set the feed dog height and stuff but for the first time ever I had to use a punch and some people call it a center punch or a nail punch but I never had to use that on a machine before and uh, so that was that was kind of fun for me just a little bit different you know <laughs> um, and if you're gonna uh, work on a, on a machine with tools or chemicals be sure you wear your safety um, your eye safety and stuff like that right so no nobody gets hurt okay so let me rearrange this so I can get a nice good uh, view of the machine here and then we'll get started this looks pretty good to start with and I'm sure I'm gonna have to be moving it around but this is the hook slide as I've said before and uh, we're going to remove it. Um, oh, the first thing you see, I've got I've got all the bars and everything out of here. Um, but if you if you if yours are in place, you would want to take off the presser foot um, before you did any of this. And uh, I've I've seen videos of a lot of people taking this off and they just like pry it up and, and snap it off. And, uh, you know, it, it works and people do it and you'll probably be okay, but you do take a chance of breaking the, what's called the uh, tension spring. Is that what they call it? Yeah. The hook slide, a uh, friction, friction spring that holds the, holds the plate on there. So I'm going to show you how not to be one of those people and take that chance when you want to remove this. Um, it's not absolutely necessary, but it is easier if you remove the mm, throat plate. More commonly nowadays, it's called the needle plate. But back during this model, it was called the throat plate. And like many of them on vintage machines, it's just got a couple of chrome plated screws here 
that hold it. So we'll take that off and put the parts aside. And then the plate just lifts right up. And we've got good exposure now to the throat area. We can see more of the oscillating hook here. The feed dog, uh, the, the bobbin of course, and the mm, bobbin case. And this piece here, which is called the bobbin case position bracket complete because it's composed of several little pieces all screwed together and attached to the machine so the whole thing is called the bobbin case position bracket complete and I'll break down those parts in a little bit but now that I've got this off I'm going to turn the hand wheel or the arm until my feed dog gets into the lowest position and then I'm going to slide the plate towards it and instead of prying this up off the spring, I'm just going to lift this back end a little bit to get it up above the feed dog and keep sliding. And then it's going to slide right off of this tension spring. Okay, and you, do, you have a lot, lot less risk of breaking the tip off, of, off the spring or cracking it down by the screw because you put uh, too much flex on it. And the slide plate is like most of the Singer ones. It has these uh, slots in here that the spring slides in. And one end is closed. It's crimped. Or like in this case, this was actually milled out and then curved. And doesn't go straight to the end. Like this, this end goes right off. This end doesn't. And, and that's so that when you pull it forward, it stops because it can't slide off and that's that's good because you don't want to you know pull it off every time okay so now that I've got all this exposed and here you can see more of this uh, bobbin case position bracket part here I'm going to push on this ejector it's called which is just a little lever on a spring and it lifts up the bobbin so it's very easy to bring out and this uh, part uh, right here that you see comes up is called the uh, position bracket latch okay and it's held to the position bracket by a screw and by a hinge stud up here also passes through it. I'm going to leave that in for now and I'm going to take the feed dog off and, and then this will come out real easy. So the feed dog was a bit of a puzzle because usually you see a couple of little screws up here that um, the feed dog screws into kind of like a lifting arm that's part of the feed system and you take out the couple of screws and you can lift the feed dog off and I'm looking all around here and I'm like hey there there is not anything like that so looking down in here I just I saw the feed dog sits on a like an L bracket that then goes right down into the middle of everything so uh, Trying to, trying to find how it connects is when I started cracking the wood on that base, so I just took it out. Uh, let me get a block here. You know, a viewer the other day mentioned to me about instead of a wood block, she uses some cut up pieces of those pool noodles. And I thought, oh, what a great, great idea, because sometimes my machine slips off of this wood. I just, I haven't had a chance to get any yet but I thought that was a terrific idea so let's see if I can show this a little bit here um, if I can get you to look at it so when I followed that feed dog L bracket down 
it comes down into this piece here and you see that's that's kind of like uh, a combination lifter rocker arm for the feed system right it, it makes the feed dog you know travel the path come down move forward go up grab the fabric feed it to the back drop down and start again and there's a screw right there and it's you know it's a lot bigger than the usual feed dog um, screw but that's what it's called even as a feed dog screw so I I felt pretty confident that that was it so I got in here I wish you could I wish you could see that better I don't know if I move my light around here if you'll be able to see it a little a little better when I win the lottery I'm going to get a bigger work area well anyway you'll see it when I when I come out when I bring it out whoops I got that set up for last night when I put it back in so I took it apart and reassembled it a couple times to get the feel for it but this screw is uh, loosens to the left so I got my little Chapman ratchet mini mini ratchet I think they called it and uh, got that in there I'll get that screw out and show it to you then I can lift the feed dog out then I can lift the bobbin case out real easy see so that's a little bit bigger than what you think of as a feed dog screw but there's only one of them and like I said it, it holds that uh, L bracket that comes slides down inside this lifting arm so now that I got that out let me turn the machine back up and you can see how the feed dog will lift out now the first time I lifted it out of course it, it had a whole bunch of dried up gunk on it and I had to kind of wiggle it and at first I thought well this isn't the screw for the feed dog but then it finally started budging but now I've, I've cleaned everything so it should it should come should lift right up here there we go so there's the little feed dog at 12 teeth 16 teeth to an inch and there's the hole that the screw went through and there's the there's what I meant about the L bracket where the feed dog is usually just this part just a flat piece with a couple of screws this is the bracket that this part of the this L bracket is what goes down uh, into the lifter and gets screwed in so that that was a uh, unique for this machine something I hadn't seen before um, now that I have that out I'm going to be able to easily take out the bobbin case uh, let, let me lift up this latch and move it to the side now and then we can easily um, whoops we, we can <laughs> oh man we can easily take out the bobbin case here or more easily maybe at least yeah. and you've seen a lot of bobbin cases on Singer machines just like that this was before the years when they went to the Apollo hook which looks similar to this but it's uh, plastic except for the bobbin uh, tension spring now what I'd like to do now to continue this is to take out this bobbin case position bracket complete and I'd like to take it completely out of the machine now uh, part of that is to do a very thorough cleaning down here including the bracket 
and part of it is because I wanted to see all these little parts that are attached and make up the complete bracket. And you get a little better picture of that ejector now. So in looking at this, how this uh, is attached in here, it's very secure. But what I figured out was this uh, hinge stud um, goes down into the body of the machine and some mechanisms down below. And that's what holds the bracket in here in this uh, position. And that also kind of make, allows you to hinge it or swivel it like, like that. So when I recognize that's a, a, a hinge stud, I knew, well, there's got to be a set screw that's holding that in someplace. And this screw um, attaches the latch to the positioning bracket and also adjusts uh, is how you adjust some spacing on the um, bobbin case cushioning spring. It's not very visible here on this system, but you've seen it on the 401, 403, 404, Rocketeers, 600s. So that was another reason I wanted to take this out. So looking, looking down here underneath, I found where that um, set screw is. The position bracket hinge stud set screw. And as a matter of fact, I, f I found where you can see the bottom of that hinge stud. Now let's see if I can get this up here. Get you a view of this. Rotate the handle so you can see down in there. I, I think it's going to be hard to show you this bottom of the hinge screw down in here because uh, when you when you r rotate the hand wheel or arm shaft so it's set up like this and I had to get a flashlight and look around let me spot it up here but it's right up here you can see a hole in the in the black uh, framework and you can see the end of that silver mm, hinge stud right there is the end of that silver hinge stud mm. Right there. And that's what I put the punch on to punch that out. I'll show you the I'll show you the set screw in a minute and I got the set screw out just fine, but I couldn't pull that uh, position bracket up. So then I put my little punch on here and tapped it a few times and then the bracket popped out. So I got to use my punch for the first time on uh, a vintage sewing machine. But let me show you where that hinge screw is. So if you want to do this, you know, like once a year or something to to really give that hook a good cleaning. My hook on this didn't look too bad and too dusty. And I vacuumed it all out and brushed it all out and it looked pretty good. But when I took that bracket off, I was surprised how much more gunk I found down in there. So this... Um, so this, this set screw down here is chromed. And it's right there. It's that little guy right there. Sticks out about a sixteenth of an inch. Okay. So, we take a little screwdriver here. And I'll back that out. It took me a while to find it because it's on, it's kind of like on the opposite side from where that hinge stud is. So when I saw that, I figured this has to be it. And sure enough, it's a, it's a long, uh, you know, for a set screw, it's, it's pretty long. And let's see if I can get one of my spring screwdrivers on there. So this, this was another thing that was different about 
the hook and position bracket and everything from the models that I've done in the past. So that's why I said it was it was awfully interesting working on this. So there you can see that is the bobbing uh, the position bracket hinge stud set screw. Hmm. And, the, and the official name for it was something like oscillating hook bobbin case position bracket hinge stud set screw. <laughs> they threw that oscillating hook in front of every part name. Okay, anyway, let me put that in my parts container there. And let me get up in here and get my punch in here. Maybe I could turn this so you could you could watch one side or maybe get it at an angle. So look at my camera here. Can we see this? Yeah. So here's the positioning bracket and right up here at the top of it is that uh, top of the hinge stud. And I'm going to go on the bottom side of it here and put that and go in here where I can see it. So I'm sure I'm punching the right thing, right? <laughs> I'm going to go on the back side of it here and put my punch up there and give it a couple taps with my little rubber mallet. There. And it popped right out. And I, I couldn't get it out by pulling and I didn't want to pry it with a screwdriver or anything from the top. Let me get this back here so I got a little room. So that's what it looks like, you know, sitting in the, ma in the machine. Of course, when you face the machine, it's off to the left like this. But when you're at the end of the machine, you're looking at it like this. And you can see more of this latch, that silver piece on the top. It's just kind of like a lever with that latching finger there. And you see that there's the a hinge stud and it, it swivels and I didn't try and punch it out or anything um, I was happy just to get it out and clean it and get a look at it here is here's that ejector that's what it looks like from the bottom and there's a little steel flex spring in here into the part there and you can see a little tiny screw right there. And then this um, piece right here, you see a little screw here that holds this on. This is actually the cushioning spring. This is what the bobbin case kind of bounces against when um, the hook grabs the needle thread and pulls it around to make the lock stitch then the bobbin case always pulls to towards it and this cushions that a little bit and you can often still hear that when you're sewing like a little tick, tick, tick. but without that uh, cushion spring or if there's a big gap you really hear it knocking and bouncing around Let's see if I can get that bobbin case so the spring is, is screwed on here and the latch is here the ejector is on the bottom there's the swivel stud and this more uh, beefier looking metal part is the actual positioning bracket itself and there's another part here I'll, I, I have to show you but part of the uh, the bracket itself is kind of like this positioning finger up here so when the bobbin case goes in it goes in like that that little fork piece at the top has to be positioned on either side of that positioning finger and it sits in there like that inside of the hook and this edge corner or base 
of the bobbin case is what hits right here on that cushioning spring. And this is the little gap in between those two that has to be set because the, the needle thread slips through there as the hook brings it around. But, but that's, the, that's what that little cushioning effect is for. Right there. When the base corner bounces against that cushioning spring. Okay, like, like that. Okay, now the other piece of this, this is a complicated little mechanism, isn't it? The other thing was this, and, and some of you probably have noticed that when you look down in here, you see like this red felt thing up in here. And mine was uh, worn away quite a bit, and I wanted to replace it, and I had a hard time. It's, it's, um, uh, let me think of what they call that thing. Mm. Um, the positioning bracket oil pad and oil pad holder. So let me show you the holder first. You see that? It's kind of like this funnel shaped uh, spring. And, and that's where it goes, right down in there. And I mean, it was way down in there. So only the, only the top couple of coils of the holder spring were visible. That's how deep it was in there. And it was like jam-packed full, even though the top of the felt was worn off. This whole thing... And that hole were just jam pack full of this red felt that they call the oiling pad. And it wouldn't pull out. And I thought I could maybe grab that uh, spring and gently uh, twist it with a pair of needle nose. And at first I thought it was working. Let me stick it in there a little bit and you know I, I it was all full of that red stuff and I grabbed it like this where I could get the needle nose and I started to turn it and I thought it was working but what I was doing was actually bending and separating one of the coils on the spring. Let me see if you can I don't know if this new camera will focus that well. Um, let me hold that up as a white background. But you can see how the top two coils of that are bent out of shape a little bit. So as soon as I realized that was happening, I said, well, that's not the right way to go. So then I took my faithful rusty needle and I would stick it in the side of this and through the felt and kind of use it to twist around. And it did bring up the spring a little bit, the holder. It brought it up a little, but what I ended up was 40 minutes of picking, picking all that stuff out. And the first 35 minutes was, you know, picking it up and trying to pry it up and getting little pieces like that until I got down to about two-thirds of the base was just stuff full. And I mean, it was, it was so dense I could hardly put the needles all dried up, hard oil in there and everything. So then I got the bright idea to run it under hot water for a minute and then the rest of it I picked out in about five minutes. So if I had to do it again, I think I'd soak the whole thing in water a little bit, which kind of softened and compressed this old felt. And uh, I think it would have come out a lot easier. But I wanted to show you this because, because I don't want you to, to damage that. 
I don't think it's damaged beyond repair but I've got to figure out now I'm going to take a break in filming now that I've showed you all this um, I have to figure out how to get a new piece of felt and the shape of it and everything and stuff it in this oil pad holder what I call the funnel spring and if when I look down in where that goes it's kind of threaded like it would take a screw or a bolt so I think once I get a new felt in there I think I'm going to be able to like push it in and twist it in kind of like screw it in almost if I can do it without hurting the screw anymore <laughs> I tried to bend this screw back into position and I didn't have much luck so I figured I better quit before I made it worse. So I wanted to show you that. That may be the best view you've ever gotten of the oil pad holder. Alright. And, and the whole complete uh, bobbin case position bracket with all the little parts the space for the oil pad holder the swivel stud the ejector you can see the edge of the spring holding that ejector um, there's where the cushioning spring wraps around the post of the main of the position bracket itself the latch the positioning pin for the bobbin case real interesting so I, I sprayed this with crud cutter and uh, scrubbed it with a brass brush to get all the muck and everything all in these little places and I noticed that um, like the ejector worked a lot better because there was a lot of stuff built up in there that was restricting the the movement of it and there was a lot of stuff in this coil of the spring so I think that that was restricted a little bit too so I would say it's very worthwhile once in a while to uh, take it out and clean it and then clean the whole hook area with with it out being there and uh, like I said I've got a study now about this replacing the felt and what's the purpose of it it looks like maybe it's supposed to where it was positioned that it's supposed to um, ride along and like oil the bottom of the hook or, or the top and bottom of the hook as it spins around or maybe just the oil that's on there helps collect lint and keep the keep the lint from getting down in here but um, let me get back over here now you can you can see a, a, a little bit better this whole uh, area with the with the uh, that's the base of the hook and this is the hook itself and there is the hook let me see if I can turn that there is the point of the hook right there which you always want to test with a razor I use a little Zacto knife to drag on there or drag a thread on and off of that hook to make sure there's not a burr or something from a needle strike and I'll, I'll turn the hand wheel now so you can see that oscillating movement. See how the, the hook comes down right there. It would release the needle thread to go around the bobbin case and back up. And then the hook would travel back up. And then when the needle came down and was on its way up and it formed a little thread loop then the hook would come back and grab it and oscillate down oscillate up oscillate down oscillate up so that's an oscillating hook mechanism and by ha by having the feed dog out and the positioning bracket you can get in here and clean stuff a lot a lot better 
so uh, I'm going to take a break now and render render this and then I've got to figure out how to make a new felt what it should look like and so forth and when I get that figured out I'll come back and show you how I did it and see if I can get that uh, funnel spring <laughs> twisted back into the to the bracket so don't go away all right I've crafted myself a new oil pad out of um, a spool felt out of a out of a red spool felt and you can see it's um, basically a, a, like a letter Y I'll put a sketch at the end of the video uh, showing the size but I've got to get it back down into the I'm still calling it a funnel spring but they call it the oil pad holder and I'm not sure if I should put that holder in here in into the bracket first or if I should um, put the pad into the holder first I'm just I'm just not sure I think I'm going to put the pad into the holder because I want it to go all the way to the bottom of it. So I'm going to twist this up a little bit and then see if I can uh, kind of twist it and push it into that spring as I go. I get it in there pretty good and the reason that I made it a, a, a Y like this is in in my research um, I think it was kind of made to ride on the top and the bottom of the race that that little shelf on the inside edge of the hook that the bobbin case sits on and rides along. It's a little shelf there. So that's why I, I made mine to, instead of just like going up against it, I thought it'd kind of go above it and below it. And because some other people that said, felt that it was to keep the the hook race clean of lint buildup, uh, which can get in there in the groove of the a bobbin case and cause problems, and that you put oil on it to to kind of like attract and collect the lint, because you should still oil with a drop of oil the the race every time you change the bobbin. So I figured this was a good compromise, a little of each. <laughs> now let's see that I've got that stuffed in there. Can I get this screwed back into the bracket? And I kind of wish this um, ejector wasn't there. But let's see if I can get it down in there. Because like I said, it, it looks like threads in there, so I'm, I'm going to gently push down on it, but mostly I think it's just going to kind of screw right in. It sure is going in easy, a lot easier than it came out, I'll tell you that. Okay. So that's how that turned out. It's sure a lot better than the one that was in there, because it was hard as and... It was worn all the way down to the spring. I, I, I wish I could get that spring in there a little farther. Maybe if I keep turning it. Because it seems like it was down there pretty well inside. Yeah, see it's going in a little bit more. 
Because originally it was only like a couple coils of that spring were showing outside the bracket. Of course I bent I bent those now so hopefully you'll learn from me and not do that well we'll find out so um, in cleaning this area all up now uh, I want to reassemble of course and I've got to start with this by putting the hinge stud back into the hole and having it uh, 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 sit down in there um, flush. Have this uh, bracket piece by the stud all the way down into that base of the hook in that hole. So let's see if I can put it in the hole first and line it up there. Maybe, maybe I'll, um, maybe I'll put a little oil on that and that'll help get it in there a little easier. And it does swivel. Now when I put this end in, it has to go in the cutout for the latch. Right, because that position of the latch right there is what sets the uh, thread gap be between my uh, cushioning spring and the bobbin case. All right. So it seems like it's all the way down, but just to be sure, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to take my little jeweler's hammer here and and put it up there and then tap, whoops, I don't even be able to see that. Put this jeweler's hammer on top of the stud and then just tap it with my rubber mallet to be sure that I've got it seated all the way down in there. All right. Let's see if I can tuck that one of the Y's inside there and the other on top of my new felt pad. So that's how it ended up looking here. Now I'll put the machine on its backside because I've got to put in the set screw for that hinge stud. It'll be easier for me to reach around the camera and guide it in if it's on that screwdriver. Put a very light coating of oil on those threads. And there now. There we go. Very nice. And then I'll just Give that a little bit of tightening with my Chapman driver. Okay. Da -da -da -da. So that went back in pretty easy. Then I just want to check the functionality of it. See if I lift up on that latch, if I can spin it to the side, yes. And put it back in the cutout. Yes. Okay. Sounds pretty good. Let's take my bobbin case here. So this this um, 
kind of shelf and, and groove that's in the bobbin case there is what rides on what I call the, the race, the little ledge of the, of the hook, the hook race. So uh, normally when it's all installed you can just w put one drop of oil next to the edge of this and uh, run the machine and, and it'll spread it around on the race. But since I uh, cleaned it off and degreased it and everything, I'll just put a little swipe of oil in there to get it off to a good start. And then I will open the latch and swing it to the side and get my get my uh, bobbin positioned with the fork or the toes some people call it and the little positioning pin up there Let's see if I can get up a little bit and get it uh, seated flat and whoop, and swing it over to the left to get it oh see when I get the race on then I don't have the position up here in the right place that's funny I wonder, I wonder, I got this open all the way? I sure do. It's kind of, it's a snugger fit than I had on the Slantomatics or Rocketeers. Okay, so I have the fork up here around the pin and lowered it and moved it left onto the race. So before I close it up, I'm just going to hold it in place um, while I spin the hook a little bit. Yeah. Okay, so I'm pretty sh confident it's on the race there. So we'll move it back in. Now I'll do it with more force. Yeah. Okay. I guess since I'm here, I'm going to put a couple of drops of oil on that felt. Since I went to the trouble of making it. And, uh, might as well get get some on there and get it soaked in we'll put one drop there at the edge of the hook race and the bobbin case that's normally how I would do it okay so whoop, sorry my light now I want to put the feed dog back in right? And of course it's on this L bracket that I showed you that goes and drops down from the from the top here. Okay, and then I have to go into the bottom side and put the feed dog set screw in. But I have to remember too that when I do that I've got to also check or set the height of my feed dog when it comes up. Okay. Feed dog set screw goes. Give that a nice little coating of oil. This is the hole because you can see the kind of the brass colored bottom 
of the feed dog. So that. All right. See how much better it works when when you're doing it right. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Just just tight. It's snugged up a little bit. Now. Yeah, you can see they're a little loose. All right, now, when you set the height, you want to see a certain measurement above the throat plate or needle plate. And you also want to see that they don't strike, they don't hit the throat plate or needle plate anywhere, either on the sides or the front or back. And it's going to be unlikely, very unlikely, that that change changed because we didn't work on any of the areas that are used to set the location front, back, left, right. But we definitely affected the height by pulling it out and putting it back in. So, to do the uh, setting and the measurement, we want to have the throat plate back in and properly installed. And then we're going to measure the height here. Okay. And to measure the height, we're going to turn the hand wheel and you know we're going to watch these come up we're going to set the stitch for the longest stitch the machine will do and then we're going to turn the hand wheel and get the dog in the position where it's at the highest point in the cycle so you see it come it comes up from below and then it starts peaking and then right about there it's at the highest and it travels at the highest just for a little bit and then it starts heading back down like that so we just want it up at the highest height and then we're going to take uh, the feeler gauges set um, for for the height here and the height of this was uh, point zero four six nine inches. Point zero four six nine inches. And the closest I can get to that is a combination of two blades. One a Point zero one two, and the other a point zero three five, for a total of a zero four seven, instead of zero four six nine, not point nine, but zero four six nine, is the factory setting, and so I'm going to go a teensy tiny bit above that. And if you're using millimeters, that would be uh, 118. It would be 30 millimeters plus 88 millimeters. So it would be uh, 11, yeah, 118 millimeter. That's the closest I can do. So I'm going to stack those together and I'm going to put them right on the edge, the just on the flat edge of the throat plate and, and be sure and push push down in the center there to hold them and and uh, make sure that it's contacting the plate and then when I rotate this up I want to see that the top of the teeth of the dog come up even with the top of this uh, blade, the measurement. 
and it's not doing it they're not they're not coming up as high I can tell they're a little bit below this so I want to uh, raise them up and I think what I did last time was kind of bring them up high before I put the needle plate on let's see if I can move them that's why you leave the screw down below a little bit loose um, so that you can adjust these if you need to but you don't want to leave them so loose that once you once you get them to the right height or verify it, you have to turn the machine back over and tighten that set screw so let's try Let's see if I can get them up. What I did before was I got them up higher than the feeler blade. And then I just gently pressed them down till they were even. Let's make sure I'm at the top of this now. Ooh, I think I'm good. I just feel the tip of the teeth right even with that blade. Yeah. So, now that I've verified that they are the right height, I'm going to Turn this back gently so I don't disturb anything. And I'm going to go tighten my set screw so that now they will stay in that position. And of course, you have to tighten this uh, firmly. It's got a. It's going to take a lot of pounding. You know over the years so you want it to be good and tight here okay so I'll bring this back up and I'll just test them again to make sure that they didn't sneak away on me right bring them up to the highest point there and put my blades on there and yeah yep they're good okay so that's how you can check and set the height also if that's all you're doing is just go down below and loosen that uh, set screw and you know pull these up get your measurement blade and tap them down even with the blade and then tighten the set screw back up okay so uh, before when I was removing that slide plate I said um, put the feed dogs as low as they'll go and I removed the plate then when I was trying to remove the bobbin case I couldn't do it but I remember when you want to remove the bobbin case you need to raise the feed dog up as high as they'll go you want them up out of the way and I'm just gonna see if I can do this because if I can't I can always edit it out and you'll never know right <laughs> I wouldn't do that to you so with the latch up and move to the right side here um, I'm going to go in and I'm going to kind of pull the case uh, towards the race and try and lift up this right side I'll lift up the tip maybe off the positioning and then move it left once I get that tip up above the race can I tilt it then or lift up the right side pull it out the back okay that was still kind of clumsy, but at least you see it can be done. 
you know that you don't have to dismantle when you want to take this out to clean it and clean around down in here and then we'll put it back in by I think with the front tip down a little bit so that that fork gets around the positioning pin and then drop the back side down as you move it left onto the race okay see how it's moved left onto the race now in that groove I I oiled on the bobbin case and then to check if you want just don't get yourself hooked but keep your finger in the bobbin case gently and turn the hand wheel and see see if your hook can slide and so forth so I think I'm good I'm gonna put the latch back to the left and lock it in here and we'll we'll try and spin that mm-hmm okay it's looking pretty good now the when I took off the throat plate before I first took off the I mean the the hook slide when I took this hook slide off before I first took off the, the throat plate but you don't really have to do that you can uh, turn the hand wheel and get the feed dog down um, to their low point so that they're below the hook slide and then we're going to slide these two grooves onto the tips of uh, the friction spring here okay so we start back there behind it and you see the back end is going to be up on the on the uh, throat plate a little bit and holding the front end down sometimes uh, people are going to be tempted to loosen this uh, spring thinking that it's it's too tight you know but uh, it you can usually just keep keep the plate flat as possible in the back I mean you're up on the throat plate so you're you're at an angle but keep it at a lower angle as you can and slide it and those grooves will slide onto the tips of that spring and then once they once they're on there and they go forward this back end drops down and you're good so when you when you pull this open it stops because those grooves are sealed on the end and when you push it it's like that mm -hmm. very easy so try that instead of tilting this and snapping them off because if you break that spring you're just going to have to find another one and the screw that holds that spring on is a pretty narrow gauge uh, screw they have been known to break when people have uh, loosened them and tightened them so why why even deal with it so you pull it forward a little bit so you can lift the back end up above that throat plate and while you've got it up there just keep pushing it to the rear and it'll come right off of those friction spring corners okay and then to put it on you stop back there you start back there with it tilted just just enough just up off of the needle plate a little bit and then move it towards the end of the machine guiding the slots onto the spring if you do it a couple times you'll you'll get the hang of it mm -hmm. and I didn't show it to you but I, I took my brush and I, I ran some oil inside the slots under here that the spring goes up into 
and you can actually put a little drop of oil on each um, side there if you want so that when you open the plate it'll lubricate down there too. Nobody likes a sticky hook plate. Thanks for tuning in to watch the video of the bobbin area parts on a Singer Model 99K. Cute. Uh, come back and join me again for the next video in the series. I hope you have time. Thanks for watching. Take care.